Rotator cuff muscles. The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles. The supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. All the four muscles originate from the scapula and insert into the proximal humerus. Let's talk about the supraspinatus. Supraspinatus muscle arises from the supraspinous fossa. It inserts into the superior facet of the greater tubercle of the humerus. It abducts the arm and stabilizes the humerus. Tear of the supraspinatus muscle will result in inability to abduct the shoulder. The supraspinatus muscle and the infraspinatus muscle are supplied by the suprascapular nerve C5-C6, which arises from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus. Testing of the supraspinatus muscle, you can do the near impingement test and Hawken test for impingement, or you can do the Job's test. In Job's test, the muscle is tested with the shoulder abducted to 90 degree and flexed to 30 degree and maximally internally rotated. Downward pressure is resisted primarily by the supraspinatus. This is probably the best test for this muscle function. How about the infraspinatus? The infraspinatus is in the posterior aspect of the scapula. The infraspinatus muscle is a thick triangular muscle located on the posterior aspect of the scapula. The infraspinatus muscle originate from the infraspinatus or the infraspinous fossa. The infraspinatus tendon insert into the middle facet of the greater tubercle of the humerus. The infraspinatus is the primary external rotator with the arm to the side, and it also helps to stabilize the humerus. External rotation of the shoulder occurs in conjunction with the teres minor. The infraspinatus muscle is innervated by the suprascapular nerve C5-C6. When you have a tear of the infraspinatus muscle, the patient will have dysfunction in external rotation of the arm. The infraspinatus muscle is usually tested by testing the external rotation of the shoulder with the arm to the side. This is how you test external rotation of the arm against resistance. Or you can test the muscle by the external rotation lag test the examiner passively rotate the arm into full external rotation. Test is positive when the examiner let go of the arm and the patient is unable to maintain the position of full external rotation. The tear is minor. It originates at the lateral border and the adjacent posterior surface of the scapula. It inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus. The teres minor is involved in external rotation of the arm along with the infraspinatus muscle. The infraspinatus is the primary external rotator of the arm. The teres minor is innervated by the posterior branch of the axillary nerve from the posterior cord C5 C6.
How do you test for the theories minor? The horn blower's test. External rotation is tested with the arm held in 90 degree of abduction. Positive test if the arm falls into internal rotation. The last muscle to discuss is the subscapularis. Subscapularis is the large triangular muscle which fills the subscapular fossa. It inserts into the lesser tubercle of the humerus and the front of the capsule of the shoulder joint. The subscapularis rotates the head of the humerus medially, internal rotation, and adducts the arm. It is the internal rotator of the arm. Subscapularis muscle is innervated by the upper and lower subscapular nerves, which arises from the posterior cord C5, C6, C7. How do you test for the subscapularis muscle? You can do the left off test. If the patient is unable to lift the hand of the lower back, then the muscle is weak and a tear of the subscapularis tendon is suspected. Left off lag test is another test. The examiner will hold the patient hand away from the back of the lumbar region and let go. The patient will be unable to keep the hand away from the back if the tendon is torn. The belly press test. The patient presses the palm of the hand against the abdomen with the wrist in neutral position. This is an example of an intact subscapularis tendon. The positive sign for the belly press test occurs if the patient is unable to press his belly without wrist volar flexion or the elbow falling posteriorly. Thank you very much. I hope I was helpful with this lecture.